All right, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Koichi Mizushima. I am one of the minister's assistants here at Sacramento Betsuin, as well as a Sacramento board member. Um, I cannot believe that we are already at the end of 2023, and I don't know if Matt is ready for this, but I gotta show you a video of what happened at the temple this week. I think this was just Thursday morning. So Matt, whenever you're ready, if you wanna show that video clip, it needs A bit of a shocking way to begin service, so I apologize for that. But we just had to show you what was going on right outside those doors. That's right there in the front. The fact that we are able to enter a hondo today is incredibly fortunate, even more so today than any regular day. Uh, just goes to show you can't take anything for granted, and you shouldn't walk with earbuds in, right? Because if he had if he had headphones in and he didn't hear that crash he might not have known what was coming so um again not to not to you know make a make it a, a buddhist message but how grateful we are to be able to gather in this hondo you know how grateful we are um so anyway i'll start i have a little powerpoint um <clears throat> and i can't believe like i said that it's already 2023 the year goes by in a blur, and it's such a cliche, right? They say the older you get, the faster time goes. And it's just so true. It is going by so, so quickly. Um, so let's see, if, if Matt would be so kind as to connect my power, there you go, awesome. Um, we have a lot of things happening as December comes to its end. Last week, Sensei did our Bodhi Day service, right? And that was the day of the Buddha's enlightenment, one of the really major services. And it was on December 8th. So it's actually only a, a couple days before today, right? So that was a big service. Also this week in December, this Thursday, we have a wonderful performance by the Cherry Blossoms, uh, a bunch of young people that are all over uh, kind of Southern California, the Bay Area, and one kind of local. They're gonna be performing at a free concert here in the Hondo, Thursday night at 7 p.m. So be there, you guys gotta come. Everybody should come because we're lucky to have a hondo, right? We have to have this renewed sense, how fortunate we are. Let's take advantage of, of everything that we have. So that's gonna be here. And I know December, the holiday season, I know busy, busy time of year for everybody, busy month for everybody, right? So I want you to all remember as you know, you're running around, slow down. <laughs> As we are running around trying to run all of our errands and get everything ready and, and prepare the house and buy the gifts for everybody and finish up your work so you can maybe take a couple days off if you're fortunate, I know how difficult and stressful this time of year can be. But even more so, even more important it is during this stressful time, we got to take a minute and slow down. Give yourself an extra couple minutes to get to your destination. You know, uh, give yourself a little extra buffer zone to slow down so you can get everything done. But even when we do our best planning, we'll plan everything out perfectly. I'm gonna do this, and you end up in this long line. You know, even when you plan everything perfectly, life has another plan for you, right? And what do we all call that in Buddhism? Tough luck, no? <laughs> But that's dukkha, that is our principal teaching of Buddhism, right? Life is suffering, it's not easy, it's unpredictable, it's uncontrollable. And no matter how much we try to control, sometimes life has another plan in mind. So that's why it's important that when we run into this stuff, you know, don't get too frustrated, right? Don't get too mad because things happen. And uh, you've seen people at stores, right, arguing with store clerks and employees, like they're just, they're just, ah, and you're like, what is the big deal, you know? Um, everybody calm down. But people tend to lose it at this time of year. And so it's important for us to understand that 
What led, it's easy for us to judge this person. Oh, how unreasonable you are, yelling at a store clerk. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with that person? But we don't know all of the circumstances and situations that this particular person is in. They may have a huge struggle in their life. They may be suffering with something. They may have something really important we don't know. So it's important that we don't judge and that we don't jump to conclusions. And we do our best to show as much compassion as we can for everyone, especially at this busy time of year, right? So like I say, um, <clears throat> this is the challenge for the holiday season. Before you get to that angry point, before you get to that mad spot, let's try to exercise our Buddhist practice of, of patience, right? Um, but the thing about patience is, and I like this quote because it's not just being the physical act of patience, because you could seem patient. You could be waiting and, and you could look patient, right? But if you're not truly patient on the inside, that's the challenge that I'm putting out. You could stand, but you could be like, oh, I can't believe how long this line is. What's the matter with these people? She's writing a check. This is, person's actually, who writes checks anymore? What is wrong? Where's your Apple Pay? You know, that's not the kind of patience I'm, even though you're not saying the words out loud, your, your face is quiet, but that's not the patience that I'm challenging you with today. The patience I'm challenging, with you, uh, challenging you with today is true patience of changing your thought, your view, and your actions on the inside as well as that front face. Um, I want us all to do that. And I said a few words right now, right? View, thought, what, remind you of anything, right? Anybody? It reminds us that we are right here. That's what this is right here, right? The reason it's important that we have to follow, this is the, uh, the, the Dharma wheel, but it's also representative of the Eightfold Path, right? The Eightfold Path, which tells us to follow these teachings. Why do we have to follow these teachings of right view thought? Because we're all connected. Everything that we do connects to somebody else, affects somebody else. And not just people, you see everything on here, right? It affects animals, the earth, the trees, it affects everything, everything we do. So that's why it's really important that we remember that you can't just have it on the surface, but we gotta follow these teachings inside, inside ourselves. And this is the Eightfold Path, right? Hopefully you all know this, you all memorize this. Some people are looking at it like they've seen it for the first time, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. So these slides will all be up on our Sacramento Betsuin YouTube channel. You can watch them later, okay? And the reason this Eightfold Path is so important is, again, it's not just about us doing the right thing. It, the reason we do it is because we have such a deep effect on other people, okay? Does anybody know what this is? I know we don't have all of our scouts in the room today. Anybody know what this is? This is the, this is a merit badge. And in, in scouting, uh, you take merit badge classes and you get these cool little badges. You can put them on your, your sash and you can wear them. So this particular um, badge is called the Personal Management Merit Badge. And uh, I, I shared this story with one of our board members because, uh, so his name, and I'm gonna embarrass him a little bit, but his name is Marty Matsuda, okay? And you've seen him make announcements for the sports program. So when I was a young scout, we would go to scout camp back at Camp Okai High. I see Mark Omioka over there. Um, we, we spent many, many of our childhood years together at Camp Okai High, and we would take these merit badge classes. Um, and Marty Matsuda taught personal management. And it was crazy because we were taking this class, and he started talking about personal finance, right? And then Marty started talking about basic things like checking versus savings account. And then he talked about CDs certificated deposits, and then he talked about money markets, and then he talked about investing, and then he talked about compound interest. And as, a, as a, I was probably 11 or whatever I was, 10, taking this class, and I was like, hold on, Marty, hold on, hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me, if you put money somewhere, like $100, and you wait like a year, they'll give you back 103 for nothing? Like, you don't do anything? And he said, yes. And I know that's an obvious point to all of the uh, adults in the room now, but when I was a 10 year old kid and I learned that, my, I mean, it was just, it just, I couldn't believe it. This teaching that was taught to me, I thought it was the best kept secret in the world. 
this, this, this opening, uh, this unlocking of this great secret teaching me about finance and interest and compounding. And I'm like, you mean, uh, do you need a special permit for this? He goes, no. Can anyone do this? He goes, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Such a simple, simple thing that is commonplace to all of us in today's world was mind-blowing to a 10-year-old. So much so, so much so that uh, it actually changed the course of my life. It sparked my interest in finance, and it sparked my interest in just everything dealing with that financial field. And um, you just never know how a small class like that, he just thought he was just being a parent volunteer teaching some class that nobody cares about. Little did he know that he would like almost and I'm not going to say he single-handedly, but truly changed the course of my life. Because later on in my life, as some of you know, I became a business owner. I also dabbled in the financial advisory field. I got all my licenses. And today, I actually work for my, my full-time job is I work for the Buddhist Churches of America. As, and one of my jobs is I'm the ministerial benefits coordinator. So I help them with their 403Bs and retirement and all that. And that job was actually created specifically for me because of my interest and my, anyway. So who knew? And I told Marty this in the hallway the other day, and he was like, oh, I don't even remember that. So you see, an action that seems so small and so insignificant to a person may deeply, deeply affect another person. And that was an example of a positive effect. But the opposite is also true, just the same. You may do something that you don't even think is a big deal, but it could have a negative effect on someone. You know, like Myra said hi, and I didn't see her, and I ignored her. And Myra's like, oh, that guy, you know? <laughs> but you know, you don't know sometimes, right? So it could be either way. So, um, so here's a little story. The other day, uh, anybody know where SF Market is, you know, by the post office? Yes, everybody goes there. So I was, <laughs> I was in line, and uh, I, I only had two things, right, in my hands. And I got in line behind a, a, a gentleman, and he had a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. And he's all like, oh, you know, go ahead, go ahead. But in my spirit of patience and trying to slow down, I said, oh, I'm not in a rush. Don't worry. You know, ah, it's all good. Just stay there. I only had two things. But, and then so all of a sudden, he bought this bag of salmon heads, right? And then they rang him up, and he's like, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Those shouldn't be $7.95 a pound. It should be $2.95 a pound. And so the lady's all, he says $7.95 a pound. He goes, well, they're fish heads. They shouldn't be that price. And the, so the cashier had to leave, and they go back to the fish counter and get the new tag and I was like why did I not go ahead of this guy <laughs> you know and I'm like oh silly me right now I'm delayed now I'm waiting you know I thought he was going to go through again I thought life had a certain plan I thought of a certain outcome and what did life do through you curveball so since we were both stuck there at a complete impasse and the catcher's not even there anymore Instead of being mad and angry and saying and questioning why didn't I, woulda, coulda, shoulda, I just started talking to him. Hey, what do you do with those salmon heads? Do you make a soup? You know, he goes, oh, yeah, I like to make a soup. What do you put in there? And then we started talking, and I'm all, I bought a bulgogi sauce. You guys know what bulgogi is? Yeah. If you don't know what bulgogi, and gosh, this is a commercial today, you got to get that sauce. Best sauce ever. So that's what I was telling him. I was all like, hey, you got to try this bulgogi sauce. And then we're talking, and we're sharing recipes, and he's all, yeah, my wife doesn't cook. I do all the cooking. And we're talking and talking, and before you knew it, the cashier had already returned, corrected his price, and rang him up and he was already done. So what could have been a, just sitting me being all mad and questioning why didn't I do this, and then as he left, he's all, hey, how are you doing? My name's Bo, and he actually introduced himself to me. We shook hands, and he, and he wandered off, and he said bye. So what could have been just a little upset interaction and then like just made you mad and you'd be upset turned into a, you know, a new friendship, right? Just a simple change and shift of attitude. Um, and here's another story. And you get bonus points if you know where this is. It's, it's hard. You can't even see it. But it's close. It's smart and final, right? <laughs> so, okay. Well, are you looking at the sign, everybody? You see a problem with this or no? Nobody reacted to the sign at all. Everybody thought it was normal. Okay. Exactly. Yes. That's why I was sitting here with my cart in front of this sign. And I was like, huh? 
And I, I was so confused. I just didn't understand. I didn't understand if it was, a, they looked the same too. Was it a different farm of russet potatoes? You know, were they different? And I was just sitting here. And so clearly I was blocking the potato uh, display. And this lady comes out and she's all like, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And I'm like, um, excuse me. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but it's like, uh, I was up there and I'm like, wait, I'm analyzing this nonsense. And I really got, my initial response is like, excuse me, excuse me. And I'm like, excuse you. You need to wait your turn. I'm analyzing the potatoes right now, okay? I got a job to do. But instead, because it's irritating, right? You feel like, and because again, you're assuming, why are you so entitled that your, you, you, your priority is more important than mine? I was here first. I'm right, right? I was here first. You're wrong. We always, we always say stuff like that and think things like that. But instead, right when she said that, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, I went, so you mean to tell me I can get 10 pounds of potatoes for $2 and five pounds for $3? What's the catch? And then her whole demeanor changed because I didn't respond in probably the way that she's used to being responded to. And she went, excuse me, excuse me. Oh, good catch. Just like that, in the blink of an eye, she went, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Oh, I guess we should get 10. So I took a 10-pound sack, and I put it in her cart, put a 10-pound sack in my cart, and we went about our way. But how easy would it have been for you to just be like, who does she think she is, right, and be upset and mad? Um, and then uh, this, this last one was, uh, anybody go to Flores restaurant? This is a very Sacramento local talk today, right, if everybody, if you're viewing at home. But... Um, Flores has an outdoor patio uh, dining area and then obviously inside the restaurant and uh, Janet and I were eating there and we were right by the front door so we could see people on the patio but you know since the doors are closed you can't really hear them and that was a Saturday afternoon for brunch and there was this large family large group of people that were clearly all together because they had matching t-shirts and um, well I shouldn't have said that and then you laugh now you're gonna feel bad because it was for a cancer walk it was for a 5k cancer walk and uh, so they all had the same photo. So you could tell they're all together, big group of family, and they're all out there. And they had their, uh, what do you call it? What do you call the uh, champagne or samo What do you call that? Samosa. I was like, Samoa. No, that's not right. Samosa, right? Mimosa. Why? Yes. I don't drink alcohol. Okay. So, so they were, but they were. <laughs> I may not, but they were. They were enjoying their mimosas. They were having a great time. And you can tell it was a big family. And you can tell, do the photo, it was, it was probably an emotional time for them, right? They all did this walk together in memory of a loved one. And all of a sudden, one of the people just stood up on the patio and she just started singing, I'm going down. You know this, you know this Mary J. Blige song? <clears throat> And she didn't just sing it. She sang it at the top of her lungs. And so much so that it per permeated into the restaurant. I heard her and all that. <clears throat> and she was singing. And they were just feeling the vibe, right? So as Janet and I left the restaurant, I couldn't help. I just walked up to her. I, didn't even, I don't even know what I did, but I just went, Mary J, Mary J Blige. And she lit up with a huge smile. Lit up. It's a complete stranger, right? Lit up with a huge smile. And then we just embraced. <laughs> we just hugged each other. We just hugged each other. It was just this natural moment, this sharing of emotion. So again, <clears throat> these are just examples, right, of um, encounters that you have with other people. Encounters that you have with other people that could have been bad, could have been good, doesn't matter what they are. But the point is, is if you adjust and change your energy and your output and your perspective on how you want to approach this world, and I'm not saying it's going to work all the time, you know, but more often than not, if you make that adjustment and you put that positivity out there, you may be surprised by what you get in return. These are all connections with people that are complete strangers, but I opted to take a more positive and inspiring approach as opposed to a negative and upset and frustrated one. So that's really the point of me just sharing all those stories with you today. Um, in Buddhism, we are taught to be so aware of the truth of interdependence, right? The fact that we are all connected to each other. So again, for this Christmas season or just holiday season and hopefully beyond, I challenge all of you to slow down. Remember that sloth, okay? Let's slow down and let's be mindful of our Eightfold Path, particularly our right thoughts and our speech and our action and how those things may affect others. 
And let's make our connections with other people in this world positive and kind ones. Join me in Gashou, please. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.